we're going to talk about Russia's attempts at asymmetric warfare. Now, if you don't know what asymmetric warfare is, let me just define it for you. Asymmetric warfare is where you, you have conventional warfare, where they send tanks out to blow up other tanks. You have information warfare, where they put out propaganda to try to uh, influence perception of what's going on in the conflict. You have signals warfare, cyber warfare, financial warfare, or economic warfare. Different battlefields that you can fight a war on. Asymmetric warfare is basically thinking outside the box. If you're a general and you're supposed to defeat your enemy, you could send your troops into battle like uh, you normally would, or you could think outside the box and maybe get their pagers to all explode all at once. You might have, you might remember one time recently where that happened, where they just all of the 4,000 pagers of Hezbollah's uh, guys just made it a rapid, unscheduled disassembly. Just boom, just like that. That is asymmetric warfare. So it's putting pressure on your enemy without using your troops in the normal way. And Russia is pretty good at this. They don't adhere to rules when it comes to war. So they're not encumbered by things like the Geneva Convention or anything like that. They certainly have not followed any of those kinds of rules of a just war in this war in Ukraine. Believe me, I've spent at least six months there during the war and before. Any place you go where Russia has been and they got kicked out, you will hear horror stories that would just curl your nose hair. It's terrible stuff. If you think Russia is the good guy in this conflict, you have not been there. And that's all I'll say about that, okay? Because if you went to Ukraine, you wouldn't think that. Now, the ways that Russia tries to fight in an asymmetric fashion are varied and they're quite clever. They have large groups of hackers that are constantly at war with the United States. They were trying very hard to stoke division in the United States during the election cycle. Many of the more inflammatory things that you saw on social media during the, even now I saw things that I'm 99% sure were put out by Russia. For example, there's a video going around on social media of some Ukrainian soldiers burning Donald Trump in effigy and shooting at a mannequin with a Trump shirt on and a Trump hat on. I can virtually guarantee you that those weren't Ukrainian soldiers. They were most likely Russian soldiers dressed as Ukrainian soldiers because that is their modus operandi. They put out stuff like that because they know it'll fire people up in the United States. They want to create division and dissension and hatred as much as possible in the United States because that weakens us, their enemy. The United States has not been beyond doing asymmetric warfare type things in the past or in the present either. So I'm not saying that this is only the domain of the, the Russians or the bad guys or something. This is just another type of battle, battlefield that war gets fought in. You've heard me talk a lot about proxies in war nowadays and the fact that we are, I believe, already in World War III. And World War III is not going to look like World War II because now all the main players have nuclear weapons and they really cannot fight against each other directly because when you get into an all-out war, all bets are off. You've got to do whatever you can possibly do to win that thing. And everybody knows that the end result between two nuclear armed powers is a nuclear confrontation, most likely. Because of the power of the nuclear weapons, they're so much more powerful than the ones used at the end of World War II 
that they would essentially destroy all life on Earth. Mutually assured destruction makes it so that Russia and the United States cannot go to war in, in a conventional sense. It makes it so that Pakistan and India cannot go to war in a conventional sense. It makes it so that China and Japan can't go to war in a conventional sense because all of these countries have nuclear weapons. What they have to do is arm and encourage proxies to do their fighting for them. If you're talking about the war between Russia and the West that we see unfolding in Ukraine, this is not a war between Ukraine and Russia. You need to get that through your head. This is a war between Russia and the West, Russia, NATO specifically. And Ukraine is the playing field. The Ukrainian soldiers are the puppets in this. They're the ones doing the fighting and dying. If the war is actually between Russia and the West, and it's just unfolding in Ukraine, and of course, Ukraine has a vested interest in seeing this thing end the right way. If it ends the wrong way, they lose their entire country. That's sometimes how proxy wars go. So proxy wars are one of the asymmetric ways that Russia tries to accomplish its goals. It's sometimes cheaper, sometimes much cheaper, to just stir up a conflict somewhere else that you know your adversary is going to have to get involved in. And that takes the pressure off you in whatever you want to accomplish. That's what Russia has done. So if you wonder why Russia has been sending advisors to Yemen, for example, to show the Houthis which ships they should be shooting at in the Gulf of Aden, if you wonder why the Russians have been sending armaments and some advisors to Lebanon to talk to Hezbollah, if you wonder why they've been shipping armaments and electronic warfare items and probably some trainers as well to Iran, if you wonder why there were Russians in Gaza before October 7th, this is why. The Russians wanted this to happen there's even still some question out there because if you go back and watch the footage from October 7th that was filmed by Hamas, you can hear Russian being spoken in the background as they're rushing through the fence. If you wanted to be a conspiracy theorist, you could come up with a reasonable explanation that Russia actually encouraged Hamas to commit these atrocities on October 7th and helped them, facilitated that attack. Now, I'm not making that claim. I'm saying you could come up with a case that Russia was involved in the October 7th attacks in some indirect way, because if it was Iran, why was Iran so surprised when it happened? If it was anybody else, why was everybody so surprised when it happened? We see so much encouragement from Russia as they encourage Iran, Yemen, Hezbollah, and Hamas. They even brought the leaders of these organizations to Moscow to meet directly with Vladimir Putin after October 7th. So it is not outside the realm of possibility that Russia actually helped plan and encouraged or facilitated Hamas to execute October 7th. Again, I'm not making the claim. And that would have been right in line with their asymmetric warfare strategy. Now, they have been encouraging conflicts worldwide since the war started in Ukraine in order to distract global attention from what Russia wanted to do. Here's a list of some of those asymmetric or the proxy wars, the war between Azerbaijan and Armenia, which started in 2020, that started long before that, but really flared up in 2020. I was there and then continued into September of last year when it finally uh, ended. 
and with massive displacement, ethnic cleansing of 120,000 Christians from the Nagorno-Karabakh region, driven out by the Muslim Azeris and sent into exile in Armenia. That was something that was supposed to be being stopped by Russia. Russia had agreed to send peacekeepers to keep that from happening. And they had, at one point, about 8,000 peacekeepers in Armenia and the Nagorno-Karabakh region. But when the Azeris rolled in there with their tanks and in a lightning maneuver started kicking people out of the Nagorno-Karabakh, those Russian peacekeepers stood back and did nothing. They were commanded to do nothing because that creates more challenge, dilemma, for the United States and the West. What's the West going to do? Watching 120,000 Christians being driven out of their homeland, not just their homes, but the place that their ancestors have been since the time of Noah. This was a huge deal. And the Russians just stood back and let it happen. Some say they gave Azerbaijan the green light to make it happen. Between Israel and Iran, obviously, there's another proxy war in their asymmetric war strategy. Between Venezuela and Ghana, Venezuela is crumbling in their economy and their petroleum industry is just on its knees. And there's a whole bunch of petroleum. We're all in the that, chat. Yeah, Venezuela wants the petroleum that Ghana has. Ghana has much better petroleum than Venezuela. And so Venezuela decided, we're just gonna claim that it's ours. They didn't do that without Russia encouraging them. The reason that they did it when they did it was simply because it distracts the United States that much more. Did you know the U.S. is flying combat air patrols over Ghana now? Most people don't know that. That's another asymmetric war, proxy war, that they've stirred up. You may have heard about all of the trouble in Mali and Niger and the Central African Republic and Nigeria, where Muslims have been going in and just massacring Christians wholesale. Did you know there are thousands of Wagner Group soldiers there assisting on the side of the Muslims? Russia is stirring up proxy wars around the world as an asymmetric war strategy to try to destabilize the rest of the world and try to get people's attention away from the war in Ukraine. So if the United States has to send billions of dollars to Israel to help them fight their war, and we start sending money to Armenia, and we're now doing combat air patrols in Ghana, those are all resources that we can now no longer provide to Ukraine if we had the inclination to do so. So it dilutes the Western focus on Ukraine and that is Russia's strategy. Now, here's the next proxy war. The next proxy war that Russia is trying to stir up is between North Korea and South Korea. What Russia is doing with these North Korean troops is going to blow your mind. Russia is encouraging North Korea to attack South Korea and start another war in that region. How do we know this? North Korea has done some very aggressive things in the recent past, and I'm talking about the last month, a few weeks. 